Good morning, dear friends, and greetings in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. I bless all of you who are listening to this in the name of the Father, Son, and of the Holy Spirit. This is a brand new day. We are going to face this day, and what is ahead, we do not know. But we do know one thing, our Lord and our God who loves us, He is in control of every situation and our own lives. And so let us begin this day with God by meditating on His Word and listening to what His Word is telling us. Today's lesson is taken from the Gospel according to St. Luke, chapter 12, verses 15, 21. The title of this uh, meditation could be Rich According to the World, But Very, Very Poor in the Sight of the Lord. The passage for our meditation is taken from Luke chapter 12. The parable is about a farmer who knew farming well. One year, the farm produced a bumper crop. His old storehouse was too small to store up everything he got. But no problem, he thought. I will pull down the old and build a very brand new storehouse and store up all my grains and my product from my farm into that new storehouses. And then I can sit and relax and say to myself, O oh my soul, take life easy because I have enough food grains stored up for the next many, many days. So take life easy. Eat and drink and be merry. And then that night God's voice came to him. And God said, you fool. Tonight your life will be demanded of you. Then what will happen to all the riches that you have stored up? Whom will it go after you are gone, and who will enjoy that? And you have prepared this for yourself, but then tonight, if your life is demanded, to whom will it go, and who will enjoy everything you have prepared and stored up? There are a few lessons I would like you to observe from this parable. Number one, making earthly riches and gain is the, if that is the only desire one's life, it is a fatal error that leads to eternal loss. Never forget. The Greek word used for greed literally means the thirst for having more. And this is commonly found among the rich, rich people. The richer you become, the more greedy you become and you just want to earn a few more rupees. The number two lesson is covetousness does not refer to providing for one's own uh, needs and also one's family. But the lesson is this, providing for yourself and for your family members is natural and it should be done. But while we work for our needs, however, we must be rich toward God by seeking first his kingdom and his righteousness. Always remember that. And the Bible, in the words of Jesus Christ, says, if that is your first choice, seeking the kingdom and his righteousness, then other things, what you need and what your family members need, and they all will come to you. The third lesson is, each of us should heed Jesus' warning and examine whether selfishness and greed exist 
in our own hearts. Keeping these things in mind, let us examine now the man of the parable himself. What can we learn from the farmer himself? From the statements he made, we can draw what his attitude was. How can we be rich toward God? Remember, you have an eternity to face. And riches will not prepare you for that eternity. This is the greatest mistake he made or he imagined that he has control over his life and time. And he never realized that these things are not in his hand. So the lesson number one we learn from this man is this. God was nowhere in his consideration. A farmer can only um, sow the seed and by preparing and watering the farm, the ground. Who puts a life inside the seed? Who caused the seed to grow? Who caused the rain and the sunshine to come upon the seed, which are very, very necessary for the seed to grow? And these are essentials for the seed to sprout and grow and produce other seeds. If you cannot um, create life, at least do not spoil the life. He was all wrapped up by himself. He was so blind to see the coming judgment and the death, etc. Because the Bible says it is appointed unto man once to die and then the judgment. He never realized that time and his life are not in his control and in his hand. Death come to everyone regardless of one's age. People die not because of uh, his old and sickly and weak. No. Children die, infants die, boys and girls die, teenagers die, young people die. A person can die any time of his life here on earth. And always remember, it is not in our control. As, as far as God's people are concerned, there is a consolation. He says, my time, the psalmist says, my time and my life are in his hand. In whose hand? In God's hand who created life. And in this I comfort. So no matter what happened, at what time, what date, I know one thing, that my God is in control. And always remember it is appointed unto man who wants to die. And then the judgment. Never think that death will finish off everything. No. Death only means the destruction of your earthly body. But your soul lives on. And that soul will stand before the great judge of all. And face your judgment. Therefore, prepare yourself to meet your creator. The wise Solomon said. The second lesson we learn from this man is he thought he could feed his soul by the material bread. He was speaking to his soul. He said, oh my soul. Listen. While bread could feed your body, your soul cannot feed be fed by the material bread. Your body is perishable, but your soul is imperishable. It will not die. It will live through eternity. 
But which eternity will be determined by what you do with God and with Jesus Christ. Always remember, body will perish, but, but within this body lives your soul. Soul also needs nourishment to be strong and healthy and be ready to meet its creator. It comes from by every word that proceeds from the mouth of God. That's what the Bible says. Are you feeding your soul by the living bread, by the living word from God's mouth? Jesus himself said, man shall not live by bread alone but by every word that comes from the mouth of God. My friend, never, never neglect God's wonderful word that can feed your soul. So let your soul be uh, fed by the living word of God, the bread that comes from heaven, that will breathe life into your soul and nourish your soul and prepare your soul to meet your creator. And remember, eternity, there are two eternal places, one heaven and one hell. And which of these two eternal places you will spend your time, eternity, will depend on what you fed your soul with. And let it be is the unchanging eternal word of God, the living bread, which is Jesus Christ himself. And be connected with Jesus and give heed to what he says. And the third lesson we can learn from this man is, he took it for granted that his present life will live for as long as he wanted to. How mistaken he was. Death and time shall not wait for anyone. Remember this truth at least now. When your time comes, you will have to go. You cannot say to death, Oh, wait a minute, I have uh, two, three things more to do. No, he will not wait. It will not wait for anybody. And my friends, death is certain, but time is not. Remember that. Do not step into eternity without Jesus Christ living in your soul. And therefore, walk into eternity with Jesus. And you will be the happiest person. And you will live with him. And share his glory. And reign with him. Forever and ever. More than the body's health. My friends consider how healthy your soul is. Remember. We are mostly caring only for our body. Spend our money only for the body. Spend our time only for our bodies and work, work, work only for our bodies for clothes and food and drinks that's all and yet this body will perish but how about your soul that makes the body a living thing remember that and when the soul leaves the body, the body dies it goes back to the earth Ashes to ashes, dust to dust. But your soul goes back to its creator where he faces the judgment day. And on that day, what will be judgment on you? Will it be go into eternal hell or come and enter into the rest my Father has prepared for you because you remained faithful, loyal, and loving Jesus Christ and you served Him. Thus prepare your soul to walk into eternity with Jesus. 
God bless you as you consistently and always loving Jesus and walking with Jesus. Like Enoch, he feared God, he walked with God, and one day he was not to be found because God took him away. Let it be your experience. That's what God wants. Don't be a fool like this rich man. The world considered him rich and wise. But the Lord God Almighty considered him a fool. That's how he addressed. You fool. Tonight your life will be demanded of you. Then to whom will all these things go which you have prepared for yourself? God bless you as you make the wisest decision of your life. Never give up on Jesus. God bless you. Lord, we thank you for this message for us this morning. May we learn to walk with you, honor you, obey you, serve you, and thus prepare ourselves to meet our Creator and thus face our eternity without fear. We give you glory and honor, Lord. Thank you for the, your help, your mercies, and your grace. In Jesus' name, amen. This is a good day. Have a nice and wonderful day today. Amen.